Do you recall how you came to appear in Invasion USA? No. <laughs> Through my agent, I guess. Zip. None. I have no recollection at all. Well, I was only in one scene. So I worked for one day, and uh, I forgot it the next day, so you can't expect me to remember it now. May I have your name, sir? My name is Omen. Omen. Oh, yeah, like the band leader, O-H-M-A-N, isn't it? It will do. Uh-huh. An excerpt from the New York Times Review, dated April the 30th, 1953. Invasion USA, the Columbia release opened yesterday at the Globe, is an atomic war picture showing the invasion and subjugation of the United States by an unnamed but obviously Soviet army. It is almost wholly composed of stock combat newsreel footage taken during World War II. But its clever editing makes it a war of the future, complete with atoms seared American cities, drowned American children when Boulder Dam is atomized, and gutshot senators on Capitol Hill. They should have been also. And as a piece de resistance, a, a stately and desirable American girl commits suicide to avoid being revoltingly pawed by a fat, brutish, whiskey swilling whose accent places his origin just north of Minsk. It is a message picture. All the actors in it, especially the leads, Gerald Moore, Peggy Castle, Dan Dehilohi, Oh, that's the way they spelt it. They left out the O and they put an I in instead. Uh, uh, Dandy Hill, uh, uh, it should of course have been Dan O'Hurley. And Robert Bice are dismal. <laughs> in their roles. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, feelings about the Cold War. I came over here uh, a conservative, very conservative in my attitude, so I approved of everything I saw in the country. And then uh, 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 an Irish-American called McCarthy hove into sight. And uh, I watched him with interest since he was an American, uh, uh, an American Irishman. And uh, then I noticed he said rather peculiar things. And then I thought, he went mad, and uh, by the time he was finished, I was a socialist. Uh, uh, I became, as I, I said, rather socialist in my thinking, and I did feel that the conservative U.S., as we got further and further away from McCarthy, the conservative U.S. seemed to be turning McCarthy-ish and uh, declaring that the Soviet Union was this tremendous villain. Now, I never approved of the Soviets. Soviets. I never approved of their communism because I didn't feel from what I knew of communism that it was communism. It was just a, a dictatorship and the boys were trying to make the most of it. And, uh, uh, but I thought because I did go there to work for six months later. And I thought, being there, and even before I went there, that they were not terribly bright. And they couldn't run their own country. How could they threaten the United States? I thought that was silly. And mind you, I, I, I disapproved terribly of the United States uh, uh, attacking and attacking and attacking. Well, that was for political reasons. I think it was the right wing of that period. Not so different from the right wing of this period. However, I thought it was the right wing of that period doing their thing, which it was, of course. And uh, their followers believed it. 
this tremendous force would wipe them all out. And when they started building these shelters, I thought, they are nuts. It'll cost them a fortune. They'll never have to use it because the Soviets couldn't do it. This is my reaction after living there for six months. I mean, living in a town in the south of Russia, I was shooting a picture there, which was financed in Hollywood, but it was shot by Bondarchuk, the Soviet director, and uh, uh, with the Soviet army as being the center of it. It was called Waterloo. And uh, I thought when, when I was there, under those circumstances, my God, how, how can this country do anything? The food that was supposed to arrive by train for the town never arrived. Somebody forgot about it, including the train. And that sort of thing happened all the time. They were absolutely out of tune. They didn't know what was going on. And the only th person who knew what was going on was a fat elderly lady who was the head of the party in Ujgorod, which is the town I was in. And she strolled around the place. And every night at 11 o'clock outside the hotel, I could hear her. She wasn't staying in the hotel, but she'd be drinking all night. She'd go outside to the bank of the river, and I could hear her peeing. She'd squat down, lift up her skirt, and pee, and pee, and pee. Emergency announcement. Radar screens have picked up unidentified aircraft approaching New York. The red alert is on. I repeat, emergency announcement. Unidentified planes approaching New York. The red alert is on. Mr. Scheller, do you recall any of the circumstances that led to your appearing as a newscaster in Invasion USA? Uh, yeah, I, um, I had worked for a couple of guys named uh, Aubrey Wisberg and Jack Pollock's foot. Uh, I did their first picture they made called The Man from Planet X. I played the, I played the lead heavy in it. In fact, it was starred in the film along with the, the mother of, uh, of uh, Sally Field, uh, Margaret Field, and it was a guy named um, Bob. Uh, God, that's ridiculous. Anyway, Robert Clark. And uh, so the three of us kind of carried the film. And, uh, and the next film that they made was a terrible film called 3000 AD, or Captive Women, or A Thousand Years From Now. And that got Albert Zugsmith involved. They, they, they went to him, I think, to get money. And uh, he got co-producer credit. And it was done under the American Pictures banner. And uh, so that's how, I'm, how I came to know Zugsmith. And again, I was playing the, the, the lead heavy in it. And they did two other pictures uh, before they did Invasion USA, in which he was always, uh, he became the producer. And they were just the writers then. Um, uh, a thing called uh, Port Sinister and another one called Sword of Venus. And uh, I, was, I played a variety of characters. In each of those films, I played a totally different kind of guy, usually some sort of a sleazy character, a, a heavy, but, uh, but um, in Sword of Venus, I had a rather interesting guy who was a drunk. It was a Monte Cristo type film, you know, that era. And I was, uh, I had a couple of funny scenes in it. Zugsmith became convinced that I could do anything. That was, he said he used to cast films when he was getting ready to cast. He would look and if there was a part he didn't know how to cast, he would just give it to me. So that was very flattering. I, I got some weird things that happened as a result of that. This is a long answer to your question, but some of it might be interesting. But the, the most, the classic instance of how far he took it was uh, one of, I guess maybe the most interesting film that he was ever involved in was um, was Touch of Evil uh, with Orson Welles. And uh, Joseph Kalea played Orson Welles' um, uh, associate in it. He was like his lieutenant. Uh, Welles was the head, and he was his right-hand man. And so he, and Joseph Kalea was, uh, I think he was Italian, but he certainly had a, a kind of a swarthy look about him, and he fitted in the concept of possibly being Mexican or, or south of the border better than Charlton Heston, actually. And Kalea was also a man in his middle years. Well, Zugsmith tried to convince Orson Welles to use me in that part. It shows you, I mean, 
I was totally wrong for it. There was no way that I could have done that part properly. And he was trying, but he was committed. He was always, I say, trying to get me in. So I, I appreciated it, but sometimes it became ridiculous. Anyway, <coughs> in, uh, in Invasion USA, <coughs> that was just in the period when I was working for him. And so he would fit me in there, and in this case, uh, in a more obvious type of role, I played a newscaster. And uh, you heard me a little bit off camera, and then there were a couple of scenes where I was on camera announcing what was happening with this cockamamie war that was going on. You've worked on a number of atomic-themed films. How does it feel to be America's preeminent atomic character actor? Well, uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say that. I'm the only actor I know who was assassinated by an H-bomb. That was in a film called Colossus, in the Forbin Project. That's a very good picture. Uh, and also a very interesting premise, directed by an excellent director, a guy named Joe Sargent. So, so I, and I was trying, we were trying to double cross the computer and the computer found out about it. And I was sitting smoking a cigar and looking at a television screen and I had just lit the cigar and over the PA system came the voice of the computer saying, we have found you out basically and an H-bomb is about to be detonated in the next 10 seconds. Well, in the background you can see people running for the hills, you know. I just sat there like this and held, I think I may have taken a puff, but, but I just sat there. What's the point of running in the face of an H-bomb? It's going to flatten everything for, you know, 10 miles around. So, but that was gross overkill, I think, to use an H-bomb to wipe me out. So, yeah, I've had my atomic, share of atomic stuff. <laughs> Not to mention uh, matinee, <laughs> where I was gradually turning into some kind of a super ant, I think. Mant. Mant, yes. Half man, half ant, all terror. <laughs> I love that. I'm sorry, madam. All flights to Gardner Field have been discontinued. Discontinued? For how long? I'm afraid permanently. You've had a chance to, to review portions of the film. Mm -hmm. what, were your, right. what were your impressions? I was really, really thrilled with most of the end of it when all the fighting was going on. It was beautifully done. It was amazing. I'm surprised that he got permission and got all the stuff to film. It was wonderful. What did you think of the um, the way they sold the film? Uh, back in the 50s, uh, kind of a ballyhoo, you know, style, and you, you have some shots in the, uh, some publicity shots with um, Peggy Castle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about those? I frankly don't even remember doing them. I re recognized the building we stood by from the movie. Right. And, uh, but they really had some incredible stuff in that the movie. It was from what I hear, better than um, the Pearl Harbor thing. <laughs> when I came across those pictures, I was yeah. really surprised because mm -hmm. it's kind of a kind of a weird way to sell a film. Yeah. You know, the leading lady and, and Noel Neal in bathing suits next to these yeah, right. <laughs> right. burned out buildings. Right. <laughs> Sounds like something Mr. Zugsmith would think of. <laughs> But, uh, of course, in those days, we did so much, uh, you know, legwork stuff because, they, like, I was at Paramount for years, and uh, they would do send all these things overseas to the boys in the service and whatever, and uh, so you did quite a bit of it then. Yeah, Betty Grable type thing. Yeah, right, uh, yeah, exactly, yeah, pinups, yeah. yeah. Invasion USA is often referred to as the movie with the two lowest lands. Um, you, of course, are the original Lois. Um, were you aware at the time that the other Lois Lane was in the film? Or? No, because I hadn't filmed the TV shows yet. Okay. So the only thing that had been filmed was the original serials with Kirk Allen. We did those in uh, 48 and 50, I think, for Columbia, too. And uh, they didn't start the others until 51 series. Okay. So. Uh, you know, at the time, there was still just one. <laughs> the best, the original. Oh, thank you. She keeps saying she was original, but whatever. Makes her happy. 
right. Um, have you ever have you ever met the other Lois? The no. Phyllis no. Cups? She said uh, well, many things of why there's quite a bit of dislike. Um, she wrote a lot of did interviews years ago and really was pretty rotten to everybody and said that the, the first group, first show, Jack Larson and uh, George, said there was a lot of drinking and drugs on the set. But when I joined them in 53, you know, there was none. So uh, you kind of hurt feelings around the place. And, um, so what she said about me, I won't repeat. <laughs> How do you feel about um, Invasion USA coming out on DVD? Do, do you want to talk a little bit well, about Well, I think that? it's going to be wonderful because the uh, effects, of, you know, the flying and the uh, everything was just incredible. I couldn't believe it, frankly. And it was very good. I'm anxious now to play the whole thing. And uh, But it's uh, and a wonderful premise how it ends. I won't say how it ends, but uh, it was so well done. And especially now with this uh, Pearl Harbor thing, that um, you know the critics aren't too happy about it, and some people like it, some don't. And I think now is the time to get it out <laughs> and show what you did in those days. It's good.